Привіт-привіт! Welcome to my YouTube channel Speak Ukrainian and in this video lesson I'm going to teach you the second and the most easiest case in Ukrainian grammar and it's called the vocative case. So, поїхали! Let's get it started! Guys, if you really like my YouTube channel and if you don't want to miss a new video lesson, then subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me likes. So, uh, we started to learn the cases with the first one, which is called the nominative case. And uh, if you want to revise this topic or if you have never learned this uh, case before, please check out this video and uh, you need to know this basic case because it shows the basic form of the nouns and then you can continue with the vocative case. So the vocative case in Ukrainian language means kličný vidminok. Kličný vidminok. Uh, the word case means vidminok and the word vocative means kličný. Kličný is an adjective and it comes from the verb klikate, that means to call, to call somebody. Not like to phone somebody, but to call, to give a name uh, or to shout, etc. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we're going to start with the usage of this case. So, we need to know when do I have to use this case and then I'm going to explain you how to form this case. So, there are only two rules when you need to use this vocative case. So, first of all, when you address to people. So, um, when you address to somebody, you say his or her name. Uh, so, for example, you want to greet me and say, Hello, Ina. So, my name is Ina, but you have to say, Privit Inno. This is my name in the vocative case. Uh, so, some of you who uh, learn Russian language, you can uh, say to me, uh, okay, uh, I learned Russian language and there are only six cases and in uh, Ukrainian language you have seven cases and I know that uh, the vocative case is not really essential and you don't use this case in Ukrainian language, blah, blah, blah. So, I want to tell you, yes, in a colloquial speech, uh, Ukrainians uh, cannot use this case and uh, we can call each other's names and address to each other using the nominative case uh, of the names. But I want to tell you that we have this case in Ukrainian language and uh, you have to use it, it is obligatory to use it. And uh, when you want to speak in Ukrainian language correctly, if you want uh, to learn the grammar very well, if you want to sound natural in Ukrainian language and in official Ukrainian language, we use the vocative case 100%. So we always use it. So I want to tell you that you need to learn this case if you want uh, to speak in Ukrainian language fluent. Okay, so, uh, so the rule number one, as I said, when you address to somebody, you use this case. And the rule number two, you use the vocative case uh, when you... Uh, so you can address uh, to the non-living being things. And usually um, people use it in a poetry. So for example, when you say... Um, Hello, my dear land. Привіт, моя рідна країна. Or, for example, my uh, beloved Ukraine. Uh, моя кохана Україна, etc. So, uh, this variant is also possible because when we have uh, some real conversation, we don't address to objects. Yeah, we address to people. But when it is a poetry, maybe when you write a novel, you can address to some uh, non-living non -living things, so it is possible. So, what is the most interesting right now is how to form the uh, vocative case. So, uh, I want to tell you, that is also very important, uh, also, the things that I want to say about the formation of the Klitschny Vidminok. So, guys, we put in vocative case only nouns. You can ask me 
what? <laughs> so uh, usually in cases we put nouns, tag nouns, uh, it's a part of speech that um, gives a name to a subject, it's like a subject in the sentence, so it gives the name. It's an adjective, adjective describe a subject, it's also a numeral, it's clear what is numeral, and also we put pronouns, pronounces I, you, he, she, it, etc. And uh, in all cases we put all these four parts of speech, but when we talk about the vocative case we put only the nouns in the vocative case. And uh, the rule number two also, we uh, change in the vocative case only the singular nouns <laughs> and the nouns that are in the plural, they coincide with the form in the nominative case. So I will explain you, I will write everything for you. So please take notes, uh, it will be very important for you. So we are going to start with the masculine gender nouns. So I will write masculine gender. Yes, so uh, masculine gender nouns, they have a zero ending. Yes, so it means they end in a consonant. So for example, um, that let's take first of all um, a name. Yes, so for example, uh, a name um, like uh, Taras. Taras. Taras is a male Ukrainian name. So you can see uh, it ends in S, no, actually it has a zero ending, uh, so uh, it ends in a consonant. So in the vocative case you have to add ending E. And we have Tarase. Tarase. So Tarase. So masculine gender nouns, they take ending E in the vocative case. So when you want to greet your friend Taras, you have to say Privit Tarase. Hello Taras. Or how are you Taras? Jak spravy Tarase. Or for example Jim. Uh, this rule is also uh, used with the uh, foreign names like Jim, G, Me, etc. Masculine gender nouns that end in letters Che or Sha, for example, Vikladach. Vik, la, Dutch. Vikladach. Yes, this uh, word also has a zero ending, but it ends in che, and you have to pay attention when we have this um, word that end in che and sha, they take ending u in the uh, vocative case and it is an exception. So uh, in the vocative case it will be выкладачу, выкладачу. Выкладач, this is a university teacher, выкладачу, lecturer also it means, выкладачу, so uh, you can see выкладач, выкладачу, or товарищ, it means a friend, товарищу. And the last rule that you need to know, also we have masculine gender nouns that end in soft sign or in yot. So for example, вчитель. Uh, Chital, it means a teacher or a tutor. Chital. Chital. So it ends in soft sign. So in the um, vocative case we have to change soft sign into U. So it will be Vchitelu. 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 So you can see that's it. So three rules, three endings. 
So generally you have to remember, okay, masculine gender nouns take an ending a, e, but it's an exception when we have a masculine gender noun that end in sha, che or sha, then we add u, soft sign or yo, then we add u. So now let's talk about the feminine gender nouns. So uh, feminine gender nouns, I just write abbreviation, feminine gender nouns, just like, let's do like this. So um, feminine gender nouns uh, or female names usually end in a. Так? So for example, Anna, Anna, so we see ending a, Anna, and we have to change this a into o, and we have anno, 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 inna, inno, oksana, oksano, olena, oleno, marina, marino, etc. Please write down your examples in the comments to this video, I will check it out and correct you. So, because you need to practice, if you want to remember this case, you need to practice a lot. Okay, you can say, okay, if there is a um, hmm, feminine gender noun that end in ya, ends in ya. So, for example, zemlya, it means earth. Zemlya. So, it takes ending a, we change ya into a. So it will be ZEMLE, ZEMLE, ja, we change into E, ZEMLE, ZEMLE. Okay, and what about female names that end in IA, like MARIA, that's interesting, MARIA, so we have ending here IA, and we have to change ya into ye. So it will be Marie. 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 Okay. So you see, a we change into o, ya into e, e ya into e ye. So it's easy, I think. Okay. And now let's uh, talk about the neuter gender and plural nouns. What about them? So let me give you some more examples. So neuter gender. Neuter gender. So for example, mm, Sonce. Sun. Sonce. So it's clear that I write the first word in the nominative case in its base form. So in the vocative, it's very, sim it's very simple, it will be the same, just sonce. So it's not really difficult. Sonce, sonce, vikno, it means window. Vikno. Okay, you can say, Ina, it's very weird, I'm not going to address the window. Yes, I know, but I just want to give you examples, yeah, and see, and you can see that we don't change the neuter gender noun, and plural nouns, they remain the same as in the form uh, of the nominative case, for example, люди, people, люди, so in the vocative case it will be the same, люди, people, people, or for example, mommy, mothers, it will be the same in the vocative case, just mommy, so that's it. Okay, guys, so let's sum up, very easy, uh, long story short, vocative case we use when we address to people or, for example, to non-living being things in the uh, poetry, for example masculine gender nouns or a male name, we just have to add ending a. Female uh, names or feminine gender nouns just change a into o. Neuter plural 
just remain the same that's it okay so guys if you want to practice the vocative case more and you need some extra exercises i have a very special product for you i have uh written this textbook and it's called master ukrainian cases by ina samoylova it's me and that's a very perfect a textbook that can help you to become a master in the most difficult grammar topic in Ukrainian language and it is impossible to start speaking in the language without the cases so this product is very great is unique so please um, order it use it and then you will be fluent in Ukrainian language and if you want to learn uh, Ukrainian language together with the teacher then please visit my site uh, speakua.com this is my online Ukrainian language school where you can purchase a trial lesson just for one dollar and also don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram speak Ukrainian language there I post very useful one minute video lessons and lots of quizzes and tests in my stories so, побачимось скоро, see you soon, subscribe and bye-bye!